Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thanks for stopping by. In this video what I'd like to do is talk with you about zoonotic disease or zoonosis. Now you may or may not be familiar with these terms, but I'm sure that you're familiar with some of the diseases that they encompass. And some examples of those would be swine flu, avian flu, West Nile virus, um, rabies, or Lyme disease. Now these are illnesses that can pass from animals to people or from people to animals. And the reason I wanted to make this video is that a few months ago the medical community released some reports talking about the hazards uh, that pet owners face of contracting these diseases from their pets. Now in my opinion some of these uh, uh, reports were uh, borderline hysteria. Now how much of that was the medical community and how much of that was the media outlets is anybody's guess. Now, zoonotic diseases should be a concern However, I don't think that there are a lot of coroner reports out there listing the cause of death as petting the dog. The reality of it is, is that you have a better chance of contracting an illness from another person than you do from your pet. But let's look at these diseases, how they're passed, and the things that we can do to minimize our risks. These diseases are passed in three ways. First, through bodily fluids. An example of this would be rabies where an infected animal bites a person, uh, saliva gets into the wound, and the rabies are passed that way. The second way are vector-borne diseases, where uh, and an example of that would be uh, West Nile virus, where the mosquito, acting as a vector, bites an infected bird, and then bites a person, passing the disease that way. And the third way is through fecal contamination, either the soil, uh, food source or water source has been contaminated by feces. Now with the current vaccination protocols in place for livestock, pets, and people, uh, your risk of contracting one of these diseases is minimal. Uh, there are certain people that have a higher risk factor and these are the folks that have a weakened or compromised immune system such as infants, uh, people suffering from the AIDS virus, uh, elderly people or perhaps someone that's going through like a cancer treatment or something where their immune system has been compromised. There are steps that we can take uh, to minimize our risks and of course the first and foremost is to make sure that your pet is healthy. Uh, make sure they're well groomed, uh, make sure their vaccinations are up to date. Uh, if you do see any indications of flea or tick problems, deal with those immediately. Uh, if for some reason you are bitten by an animal, uh, wash the wound out immediately and get to the doctor as soon as possible. Another way you can help minimize your risk is to control pests around your home. Keep the mice and the rats and the fleas and stuff to a minimum. Uh, cook your food, uh, especially meat and eggs, thoroughly. If you're eating raw vegetables, make sure that they're washed very well. Um, and of course, practice good hygiene. Uh, you know, after you clean the kitty box or you scoop the poop in the backyard, be sure to wash your hands well using an antibacterial soap. Now, you know, in spite of these reports, in my opinion, you have about as much chance of contracting one of these diseases as you do uh, winning the lottery. So please, don't let the hype and the unwarranted fears affect your relationship with your beloved pet. Uh, thanks for your time, and I hope to see you again very soon.